Hey guys, it's Marshall from Going Gear, and this is episode two of the Going Gear videos. So I said last week in the first one that I was gonna do these once a week. It's a week later, this is the second one, <laughs> so I think I'm off to a pretty good start. Hopefully I can keep on going like this and uh, keep on releasing them once a week, we'll see. So anyway, we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. In the last video, I said I probably wouldn't talk about flashlights this time, or I try not to. I lied, I'm gonna talk about flashlights. This is gonna be something that I hope is gonna be really useful to you. So I've done flashlight reviews in the past, I've done comparisons and all things like that, but I never talked about how to maintain or repair flashlights, which is something that's pretty important, because a lot of these things, they're not the least expensive things in the world. Some of them are pretty price pricey, and uh, they're pretty high technology, so I mean, there is a chance that something can go wrong with them. But a lot of times it's something simple that you can fix at home. A lot of stuff we see that comes back to us, you know, is something as simple as batteries. You know, bad batteries in the light or just needs to be cleaned. So I'm going to show you how to go through your flashlight. And I'm going to use a couple of our more popular models to show you what I'm talking about. And just how to maintain and repair simple flashlight issues. So uh, let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, so the light I'm going to use in this video is one you guys probably all have sitting at home. 4 sevens XM18, 16,000 lumens of power. Just kidding, I'm not going to use this light. <laughs> I honestly wouldn't really know what to do to uh, maintain this thing. It's, it's pretty big and complicated. But uh, if you want one, you can definitely buy one from us at GoingGear.com. But uh, this is not the light that we're going to use. Okay, you can see I have some tools and materials over here. Four flashlights. I want to stress real quick that these are not problem brands or problem flashlights at all. These are actually some of our best brands, some of our most popular and most reliable flashlights. It's just that these are my personal lights, so these are the ones I have at home to demonstrate on. And uh, they possess a lot of the qualities I need uh, to be able to show you how to do these things, so that's why I have these here. Not because they're problem lights by any means. Actually, like I said, these are all mine, so they're in really good condition, <laughs> and they all work perfectly. But uh, I'll still be able to show you all the, uh, the different stuff that you need to know using these lights. So the uh, four lights we have here, we've got a Surefire 6PL, really popular light very widely known. A newer light, Claris XT11, really popular light. It's got the dual switches on the back. Cork AA squared from 4.7s and a 4.7s Maelstrom G5. One of my favorite throwers. I really like that light. Okay, the first thing we're going to check using this Quark AA squared light is the batteries. And I know that sounds really condescending, but you guys would be really surprised at how many people we have that send us lights back that they work just fine, they were just using bad batteries. And they may be using multiple bad batteries. So one thing to keep in mind is that just because you're using multiples doesn't mean that any of them are good. They could have been from a bad batch, especially if you pulled them all out of the same packaging. They could be 20 years old, have no juice in them, um, just not very high quality batteries and not have any juice in them. So just be aware of that. Just because you use multiple batteries doesn't mean they're all good. So there are actually no batteries in here right now so of course it's not going to power on. If it did, I'd be pretty impressed. <laughs> that, that would be amazing. I would have electricity coursing through me or something. Um, one of the things I really like to use to be able to test really basic things on a light is a voltmeter. Uh, so take a battery, connect black to positive, red to negative, and just test the voltage on here. This is actually a multimeter that I've had for probably at least 20 years. You can pick these up really inexpensively. Go to a Harbor Freight. This is a Craftsman. Go to Sears. Go to Walmart. Just about anywhere you can pick up one really inexpensively. And again, all you really need is a voltmeter because you just need to see the voltage that the battery is putting out. And this is a 1.3 volts. 1.3 volts on the other one as well because I just pulled these out of the packaging. <laughs> so they're both good to go because, uh, of course, Sanyo Antelopes are good to go out of the packaging. So both the batteries are good. Definitely check that if you can. Another way to check it is if you don't have a voltmeter or multimeter, you can always throw them into another light and see if it powers it on. If you have a similar model or even another electronic device, throw them in that and see if it powers it on. That said, it doesn't necessarily mean that the batteries are gonna be able to power on your light because some batteries require freshly charged or uh, relatively high quality batteries to be able to get into your higher outputs so it may be able to power on a device that requires very little power to turn it on and not power on your fl flashlight. So just keep that in mind when you're testing it in other devices because some of these require a lot of power to turn on. Another note about batteries is, like I said, these are Sanyo Eneloops. Please, please, please use high quality batteries in your flashlights. And the reason is, if you're using alkalines and like a cork AA squared, you know, it's not a super expensive light, but it's still, I think they retail around 60 bucks which is a decent amount of money. 
You know, I mean, nobody wants to just throw away 60 bucks. Alkaline batteries, when you leave them in flashlights for extended periods, or even not extended periods, they a lot of times will leak inside the battery tube. And what happens with that is, well, first of all, if you leave it in there for not too long, uh, the battery acid and all the gunk inside can leak out, damage the internal component components, damage the inside of the head, the circuit, and all that kind of stuff. And that stuff is not covered under warranty. Using alkaline batteries and having them leak is not covered by any manufacturer's warranty that I know of. Um, so you will not be able to get your light fixed for free like you would with any manufacturing defect. Um, I've actually seen alkaline batteries where they would fuse to the inside of the battery tube and you could not get them out of there. So there is so much corrosion and everything in there, the metal on the outside of the battery fused to the inside of the battery tube which obviously is not a good thing and uh, no manufacturer is going to cover that. So just be aware of that, use high quality batteries. Same goes for any of the lithium uh, lights and we'll get to that here in just a second. So you have high quality batteries, they have good voltage, but your light still isn't turning on. The next most common thing that we see is dirty contacts. And the contacts that you have with most of the flashlights are for one thing gonna be the threads. So like on this cork AA squared, you can see anything that's unanodized, so anything that's on the inside that's going to be anodized is not going to have contact going through it, or not going to have the electricity going through it. But anything that's unanodized, like the silver colored threads out here, and then we'll take the head off here on the top as well, those are your contacts. You have threading inside there, you have threading inside the tail cap, and then you have electrical contacts down there of course, and then the spring. I've never really seen a spring be a problem except when uh, batteries or alkaline batteries leak inside a flashlight and they can corrode that. But honestly, if you've gone that far, your light's probably ruined anyway. <laughs> so I've personally never had to clean a spring for anybody um, and actually have it, have it uh, work after that. Easiest, easiest way I've found to clean, especially battery contacts, or not battery contacts, but flashlight contacts, is just little alcohol pads. You can pick these up everywhere. You probably have them lying around at your house. If you're married, your wife probably has a bunch of them. They're in first aid kits, they're all over the place, and they're really inexpensive and easy to find. So just take it, clean off the threads really well. Make sure you get all the threads. Like I said, this is a light that I baby. And you can still see there's gunk on those threads. I mean you should see some of the lights that we come in, that we have come in. We'll have to use multiples of these alkaline or of these alcohol pads on each contact point because their lights are so filthy, especially plumbers and electricians and guys like that that are in crawl spaces, their lights get really dirty. So, uh, I mean, these are relatively high, high technology. So, I mean, you've got to keep them clean, got to keep them maintained. You can't just uh, use them in harsh environments and expect them to always work for you without any trouble. So clean all the contacts, make sure they're nice and clean. There's a uh, product out there called Deoxit. I have a bunch of it, but I forgot to bring any home with me. Um, it's good to put on the contacts because it'll actually help keep them from corroding and it'll help improve the uh, the contact when you have two parts touching. So Deoxid's a good product. Check it out. Another thing you want to put on there is a high quality lubrication. This is Nile Gel 760G. I'm a really big fan of Nile Gel. We don't sell it. Actually it comes with some of our Army Tech flashlights that we sell. But um, we're going to get it before too long. But just take it and put it especially on the o-ring you want to make sure the o-ring has some good lubrication on it you don't need a ton you saw I just put out a little bit but you want to put it on the threads and uh, just put it on the different areas I think that was the one I just did <laughs> so we're gonna put some on this end instead All right. so that helps keep it clean uh, but the bigger deal is it just improves the actual the the movement of the thread so when you're putting the head or you're turning the head or you're, you're removing the head or, or the tail cap or anything like that it makes everything just easier to use and then get that spare nile gel off my finger wipe it on my pants because my daughter's an infant and she's already thrown up on them on a couple times today so <laughs> they're already pretty dirty all right so contacts a really important thing to check the next thing to check is if the light is still not working is the tail cap there's a lot of stuff going on here in the tail cap that could be causing an issue. We're actually going to zoom in for this so you can see the different stuff that I'm talking about. So first off is the tail cap itself. And a really easy way to check and see if the tail cap is not working, say this tail cap wasn't any good, 
which is not going to be the case because I know it's good. But just to show you how this works, if you take and have the batteries in there, batteries that you know are good, you just need to complete that circuit. So I'm just going to take, I've got a Spyderco Sage, nice little knife, take and bridge that contact and you can see the lights powering on when we have it connected to the threads. You can actually see some electricity arcing down there on the blade. Probably not the smartest thing. This is a nice knife that I try not to mess up. <laughs> so I've got electricity coursing through it. Hopefully that doesn't do anything to it. I don't think it will. But uh, that's a really easy way. Just get a piece of metal. You know, I've got these tweezers here as well and you can use that to uh, make contact or a piece of wire. Anything that's gonna gonna bridge the two contacts just to see if it's the switch or not. So if you determine it is the switch, there's a few things in here going on that you can check. So one thing that you'll see right here is this piece right here, which is called the retaining ring. Sometimes from the factory or just use, it can become loose. So what you do is take anything. What I have here is just some tweezers. I like the tweezers like this that you have to squeeze to expand because they're easy to use, especially in these. Just take and put it in each of those holes and you want to tighten it down. Make sure it's nice and tight because let me show you. I'm going to open this up. I'll show you what's on the inside here. Give myself a nice little blood blister with my tweezers. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. All right, so these are all the components that you have inside the switch. Now, the Surefire is going to be a little bit different. I'll show you that here in a second. But a lot of the lights that are made in China are using really similar components on the inside. So you're going to see this a lot on the, uh, the different Chinese-made lights. So for one thing, a lot of people ask how you replace this little rubber boot cap. And that is how you replace it. You take that retaining ring out dump out those components and then you can replace the tail cap if you happen to need to replace that. So you have the different components in there. This is the switch. You can hear the clicking in there. A little washer to help keep everything together. We're going to put that back in there. Put the switch back in there. Put this ring. I'm going to show you. Go ahead and put it back on there but you can see there's a little gasket in there. There's the ring. We're going to go ahead and put it back on there and we are not going to tighten it down. I'll show you what that does. If your light's acting funny, if it's not switching modes properly, or if, or if it turns on kind of funny, this is a really common thing that can be happening with it. So I didn't tighten it down all the way. And you see the light does not power on. And as I'll show you here in just a second, this switch is just fine. It's just that that ring is loose. So if your switch is acting funny, you know the batteries are good, you know the head is good, check this little retaining ring and just make sure that's not the issue. Now the switch in there is a mechanical piece, it can fail, it's not very common, you know, maybe after a few years of use they'll fail, but I mean they're rated for tens of thousands of clicks, so they're not, they're not something that's going to fail really, really easily. But I've got it tightened back down on there, so we're going to go ahead and put the tail cap back on, and you can see now it works just fine. So all it was was that little retaining ring on the inside was loosened up. The other thing you want to check, and this is something that's kind of specific to 4.7s, although there are some other manufacturers that use this method to, uh, to put their tail cap on. Actually, I'm going to put the, or not the tail cap, but the clip. I'm going to put the tail cap back on, and you can see if I grip it right here and I loosen it, I can also loosen this ring right here. And let me show you what that does. I'm actually going to take the tail cap off, and I'm going to loosen that ring. See how you created that little gap? Well, when this tail cap is not all the way on this, we'll show you. The light's not going to power on. So you know your tail cap's good, you know you have good batteries in there, you know it's a good head, but it's not powering on. It could be just because this little ring right here has gotten loosened up a little bit. And one thing that's a problem is if you have it loosened up, Actually, if you're going to take it off, one thing you want to do is remove that O-ring that's down here. And the reason is, is it can kind of tear up that O-ring. And O-rings are important, so we don't want to tear it up. So we're going to go and take this ring off. And this, so this is the pocket clip. If you ever want to remove it, that's how to remove the pocket clip. But the thing is, if it's not properly seated in this little notch right here, if we have it on, let's say we have it off to the side, even when I go to tighten this down, when it gets to a tightened point, I'm going to think it's all the way down, but it's not because it's not in that little groove 
it's not going to properly tighten. The uh, You actually need to press in on it a little bit and then make sure the retaining ring goes over the, the, the clip and meets the body all the way down there. So we'll go ahead and put O-ring back on, put the switch back on. So those things I just showed you are by far the most common things that you that we see. Definitely check the batteries first. Make sure they're good batteries. Check the switch. I showed you how to check the switch. Just bridge the contact somehow. Use a couple pieces of metal. Um, a quick note on that is a lot of these, these flashlights are dealing with a lot of power and high power batteries. Use common sense. Use appropriate safety measures. Um, I don't think... I don't think I showed you anything stupid. <laughs> that said, you know, do your research on this stuff. Definitely want to use appropriate safety measures. All right, so that is all the stuff that you can do at home, or most of the stuff that you can do at home. If it's anything beyond that, I honestly have never seen a problem with the body. So the only thing that I have actually seen is uh, if the body is good from the manufacturer, I've never seen any problems, but I've seen ones, not with 4.7s or anything like that, with some of the lower quality lights where the threads weren't cut properly or something like that, so it didn't make contact with the inside of the head. But if the body is good when you get it and it works for a while and then all of a sudden stops working, chances are it's not the body or the battery tube. So if you've eliminated all this stuff down here, the only other stuff you really have is in the head. And honestly, that's not really stuff that you can fix yourself or the average person can't fix, it, fix themselves. So if the LED burns out, which they're rated for 50,000 hours, so that's definitely not a common thing if you're using the correct batteries and everything, or the circuit goes bad, not really something you can replace at home. So for anything like that, you have to send it back to us or for 4.7, send it back to 4.7, Surefire goes back to Surefire. Um, send it back to the appropriate uh, place for the warranty service and they can take, can take care of you on that. All right, so that was the 4.7's AA squared. Got the Maelstrom G5 here, really similar stuff. So I mean the batteries, you can test them the same way, just get a voltmeter or a multimeter, test them out, do the same thing on the switch, because as I'll show you on the inside, you have a similar kind of setup, it's a little bit different, but you can still do the same thing by, uh, by taking it apart, using tweezers or needle nose pliers or anything else that'll get in there and be able to take it apart. A um, little bit different ring on here, so these are really common with the tactical lights, you've got these rings, that, uh, that that are the combat grip rings, so you can use this with a with a handgun or something like that. Uh, one quick note on those is the same thing that you saw with the pocket clip retaining ring on the four sevens on this Maelstrom. You can have the same issue. So you have if you have the pocket clip where it's not seated correctly, or you have something down in there, maybe the O ring got loose. You want to make sure this is tightened up all the way because that can also keep the tail cap from going all the way down. Because say you have it loosened up a little bit, you go to turn on the light, it's not going to power on because that tail cap isn't making proper contact. Because like I showed you earlier, you want all those things nice and clean and of course they need to make contact. And something like this, where you have anodized threads on the end, this part right here, this ring on the end of the battery tube is what's making contact with the inside there. So you want to make sure that all that stuff can meet and touch properly and have a good connection. And on the inside of the head, same kind of stuff. Uh, if it's a problem inside the head, it's probably not something you can fix, but uh, again, that's a lot, lot more rare. We don't see problems in the head usually. Anything like that, we'd have to send it back to the manufacturer to have them fix it. Claris XT11, the reason I brought this one out is because if you have the dual switch like this, a lot of times you'll have to send this back to us for repair. We keep spares of these. Again, not that it's a common thing, but uh, these are a little bit different because you actually have two switches on here. But still, again, similar setup on the inside. So you have that retaining ring, you can loosen up, you can test the batteries, make sure everything's getting good contact. Surefire 6P, a little bit different on the inside. So if you open it up and you look at the inside of the switch, a little bit different setup on the inside there. So. Not a whole lot you can do in there. A lot of times if you're having problem with, problems with the Surefire switch, if you just contact their customer support, they'll just send you another one. But uh, you can do the same thing. Just get something to, uh, to make contact on, on both the end of the battery and the battery tube. And just make sure 
that it is the switch. That's a really easy way to test. Once you verify that your batteries are good, you do the same exact thing with a Surefire light. All right, one other quick note is if you have anything like the zebra lights that we sell, anything that has a side switch, something like this is not meant to be used or maintained. So if you have any issues with the side switch, which again, I'm gonna beat this to death <laughs> just because I'm the guy selling these things. I don't want you guys to think that any of these are, are low quality products because they're not. We don't sell anything that's low quality. Um, anything that's like this, that's a side switch, that's not gonna be yet meant to be used or man maintained. Um, once you've checked the batteries and all that and you verify that's not the issue, if it's still not powering on, something like this you'd have to send back to us or back to them for warranty repair. That's not really something that you can, you can maintain yourself. All right, I talked about how to repair a flashlight. A lot of the same stuff applies to maintaining a flashlight. The biggest thing is, if you're using the light a lot, like I said, especially you guys using them in harsh environments, you're getting the sink dirty a lot, you're throwing it in the mud, which these lights can definitely handle. But you gotta remember, if you're taking that tail cap on and off or the head on and off to replace the batteries, you're probably moving a lot of that dirt and grime around, getting it into the threads, getting it into the contacts, getting it into the inside of the battery tubes. So every now and then, just take one of those little alcohol pads, clean everything off, put some lubricant on it, and honestly, that's all about all you really need to do for maintenance. I've never gone through an O-ring. Most of the manufacturers will give you spare O-rings in case you happen to need to replace one of those. So you can't always replace one of those, and a lot of them will give you spare boot cover caps as well, so you can replace those as well. But real basic maintenance, just keep your light clean, and you'll have a lot fewer problems. That's one of the biggest things we see when, when people bring a light back. The first thing we do, do is just clean everything off, and that solves quite a few of the problems that are not battery related. Because <laughs> battery related issues are definitely number one. All right, so that's how to maintain and repair flashlights. Hopefully you found the video useful. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or at goinggear.com, or you can shoot me a message via YouTube on any of the forums that we're on. However you want to contact me, we try to respond as quickly as we can. So again, this was Going Gear episode two. We're gonna to try to keep on doing these once a week. I said I'd talk about knives, fire starters, flashlights, compasses, jackets, Whatever you guys want me to talk about, I'm completely open to. So if you have a suggestion, I already have a pretty big list of stuff I want to talk about, but I'm completely open to suggestions, so drop me a line, and uh, I'll try to work it into a future video. So again, this is Going Gear Episode 2. Thanks for watching.